Yes, yes, so welcome, come well, my subscribers, i.e., my subconscious subscribers. Welcome, come well, to another show entitled Am I As As I Am? Most important, as you are. Today's topic in question is, are we really in a world or is this really a world that we live in? Is there a such thing as a world? This video came to me spiritually as a kind of living body, kind of body. way of understanding. Or it is, I hear a lot of oh, beings, people, visuals. Uh, giving a lot of attention and holding a lot of activity inside of this place that is called world. Are we really in a definition of what the world is and what has been given to us through pictures, photos, videos? Um, is this concept of world actually a part of our true one-on-one uh, -on -one experience? What do we know of a world? What is a world? How can we validate and confirm and vouch that an actual world does exist? How many of us have actually been outside the firmament to look back upon to see that there is a round world that actually exists and all this activity that takes place inside of this round world that supposedly, allegedly exists? A spirit gave me this so I can share this. Uh, to bring certain levels of understanding, possible clarity and balance to the truth, which is truth stands, truth that always will be. Now, I base my videos based upon common sense. If you have common sense, then you can actually use these tools, these line for lines, doorway for doorway, that I choose to open up on the channel things through and you will be able to put the pieces together by not lying to yourself being extremely honest with yourself being extremely genuine with yourself and your own personal and private experience oh um, this is what minds do this is what beings with common sense does if something is not exactly true to your personal experience, there is no way possible for you to validate or confirm a damn thing. That's just common sense that a being with a mind does. That's how we function. I can't validate or confirm something that I have not witnessed with my own eyes or experienced with my own existence. That is oxymoronic. It doesn't make sense. So I'm asking you, just like I've done myself, 
just to have common sense, to be real to your experience, not real to a photo that was given to you, or real to a video that was shown to you, or real to what someone or somebody else or somewhere have may, may have said or shared with you, but you being real to your moment, to your present moment, to your nowness, to your experience. Void of imagination and the land of make-believe. But just be real with you. What is so challenging and so difficult for you to be real to you? Self is only real with itself. No matter how much you the avatar or the vessel or the carnal body or the vehicle body talks and thinks that is actually being real to itself when actually you're just vouching for someone else's story. You're vouching for someone else's picture. You're vouching for someone else's photo. You're vouching for someone else's video or documentary or biography. But did you actually shoot it? Did you actually see what you're validating, vouching for, and confirming? This is the whole path of being real to thyself. Be real with yourself. Genuine. Honest. Okay. Um, so before I go into this, uh, once again, the topic is, are we really in a world? Or are we not, pretty much, as far as how the word world was uh, given to us? We may have to redefine that according to how this video and the points I'm going to touch upon uh, goes and moves throughout this gnosis today, okay? Those that are familiar with this channel, that are familiar with this show, know that I go line for line, which is what I say, doorway for doorway. And together, we both walk down this hallway. Good. First doorway is the origin of the word world comes from Old English which only specifically meant human experience. Does your common sense, is, do I still have the attention of your common sense so far? Has anybody ever looked up the definition of the word world? Once again, the origin of the word world comes from Old English, which specifically only means human experience. It comes from the word were, which is W-E-R, which meant man, and the word old or A-L-D, which meant age. So the word world also came from were out or were out, W-E-R-A-L-T, which just meant age of man or age of human or human age, which once again is the human experience. This is what the word world means. Um, so it just means basically the human experience and existence itself. So in other words, it's not a place. It's not a shape. It's only a space. Your space. Your orbit or your orbital space. Your moment. Your personal cipher. This is what the definition, dictionary definition, Oxford Dictionary and so on and so forth, 
word comes from or the word world comes from the word W E R and then A L T W E R meaning man or human A L D just meaning age according to old English man age age of man human age the age of humanity once again ties right back into the human experience this is what the word world means doesn't mean something round doesn't mean a place it has the word world has nothing to do with the word place or location or address see we're here to dispel certain things that we have been given but nobody almost little to no person has ever done the true just and this is just surface research and surface study let me just look at the definition of the word world so we're just touching upon just the, the very surface of something at this moment in this video but it specifically just meant the human experience. It meant existence itself. It didn't mean a place where land and countries and continents and oceans and seas and lakes and rivers and reservoirs and people and civilizations and events and so on and so forth. It doesn't mean that. The word world does not mean that. So by its definition, it just means now. It just means the moment. It just means this present moment right now and the orbit around your body, around this moment. That's what the word world means. It gets deeper. This video gets a lot deeper as we go along. Just follow along, not with your brain, but with your mind. Follow with your heart, not your logic region. These uh, re uh, reasoning, debate, arguing, trying to see where I'm wrong at, trying to wiggle yourself in to see where I may slip up. But just flow and be of grace as I go along. Okay? So it just means space, your space, your orbit, your orbital space, your moment, your present, your personal, private ciphering of self. That's what the word means so far. So, um, definition of now. Also, the second definition means that the earth together with all of its countries, people, and natural features. That's the second definition of the word world. Definition, the second definition of the word world is the earth, quote unquote, once again, because we have words like world, earth, and planets, world, earth, and planets, world, earth, planets. So another definition of the word world is the earth together, the earth together with all of its countries, people and natural features look at the word earth the word earth is metaphysically synonymous with the word oath so earth is actually oath you've taken an oath made a contract agreed with an agreement to be here okay so the word earth is oath now let's look at the word country within the definition before because the definition was the earth together with all of its countries people and natural features now the word earth is the word oath so so far we have the word world which just means human experience. Now the word earth means oath. 
Now let's look at the word country. Country, according to the Oxford definition, dictionary definition, a few different dictionaries, it just means a body of land. Remember, as we go along with a metaphysical mind and a cult mindset, we look at things that are allegedly far and distant away. That's not us. That has nothing to do with us or not a part of our immediate self. And we bring all those far things to the immediate self to see it as something that is a description of something internal or something that we are wearing, which is this body. We are wearing this body. This body is just like this shirt. So if you ask me what I'm wearing, I say I'm wearing the body. And the body is wearing shirt. The body is wearing rings. The body is wearing stones and crystals and copper and a hunk. I am not wearing anything. I am just wearing the body. The body is wearing the clothes. So we're bringing things in to its immediate self, its immediate nature, its immediate there's no destination, there's nothing further, there's no distance, there's no time. So when we get these definitions of something which is distant, like an earth or a world or a planet or a people or a country, or we have to bring all these things that are far and make it immediate. Make it what we are. To make it a part. Or to see these things as actually things that are inside of us and on us. Okay? This is what a metaphysician does. The one who has a metaphysical mindset and is into the occult practices of nature and beingness. This is what we do. This is how we do. And if you do this, then you are of the same kind of vibration of frequency and mindset and of the same path so you to the same. The world earth is oath. The word country means a body of land. Like the human body. See? So, so the concept of the word world as something out there that's round and fungus and it's a circle. No. It just means a human experience. So we made that whole thing that's supposedly out there, we made it us. Now the word earth is just an oath. So there's no earth out there. There's no circle. There's no world, no earth, no planetary body. There's just us. It's our body. This is the oath that the human experience took. Earth, world, just means the oath of the human experience. Now the word country just means a body of land. Is this body not a body of land? This body goes right back to this land when you leave. So we're not wearing a body, we're wearing land, a body of land, or a land-owned body. Now we also have natural features within the definition. Of course, natural features just means a natural human being, the natural condition, the human condition. So far, we took the word world, earth, country and natural features and made it something that is within us and on us. You have to be honest and true and genuine with your reality. And I'm going upon these points for a very pretty damn interesting reason, okay? We have these catchwords like world, earth, and planet. We're trying to dispel these three words, these three main words. Wor world, earth, and planet. World we know, 
just means a human experience. Earth, we know, just means an oath. Now the word planet. Planet is just basically a plan. That's within the word planet, right? You have the word plan. Planets is just a network of nerve endings that bring about the divine plan of you. Plan net, a network plan. And planet also means plant. If you shook the body of his bones and his skin and it's just the veins hanging and the spinal column and the brain at the top, you will look just like a damn plant with branches and veins. That's why we become rooted here. Because you also look like roots. If I strip the body of the bones, the skin, and the organs, and I just leave veins, a spinal cord, and a brain, the brain can be symbolic of the seed. The veins and the spinal column can be symbolic of the roots that roots itself in this reality. As a matter of fact, this is why fingers and hands, the fingers hang down. This is symbolic of the veins hanging down. The hands hang down. The hair hangs down. The phallus, the breast, everything hangs down. It's rooted in this, because you are a plant. See, this plan was planted and you came about. So the words world, earth, and planet just means the human experience or the divine plan which took an oath to take on a human experience. We just broke it down. Not even touch upon nothing yet, the real main course of this video. Just looking at the three words world, earth, planet, just means the divine plan created an oath to take on a human experience. That's all. What world? What earth? What planet? What are you talking about? There's just me, myself, and I. It's nothing else. I got word back that beings are becoming too involved into things that have absolutely nothing to do with them. That's not even happening. Things that you think are happening are not even happening and never has happened and never can happen. The same crazy talk. It's very logical. Okay. <clears throat> this is kind of what I really wanted to get into as far as a world. Okay. What you call a world. Hmm. I should have The word, once again, another way of looking at this illusionary word called world. W-O-R-L-D. 
is also the word world. W H I R L E D. So you, me, we are not in any world. We are in a world. World. A whirling, a swirling. That is the true world. Let me show you what the true world is. The true world, basically, before I show you. The true world is nothing but the fetus position. You live in a fetus position. Live in a swirl. A world, like a whirlpool or a whirlwind, is where they get the whole under where they got the terminology worldwide. It's really just a whirlwind. You are in a whirlwind, in a spiral. That is the world that you are in. And the spiraling is the spirit. There's no world out there. You are the world. You are the whirling. You are the swirled. Just like atomic energy geometry. You are atomic energy geometry. The whirling. The real world. The world is just you. Want to see what the world is? Let me show you what the world is. This is a true, real picture of a world. That is the world that you are in. Do you understand? This is the world. That's it. See how the fetus is whirling? It's in a fetal position. That is the world that you are in. Not a world, but you are in a world. This is why there's nothing going on outside of you. You know that saying they say the world is in your hands? The world is in the palm of your hands. What do you think this is? This is the world when it's only 10 weeks old. This was you. You are the world. That is you. The world. There's nothing going on. There's no current events. There's no news. There's none of this crap going on. There's nothing going on here but you. Zodiac sign. Or the zodiac signs out there and these planetary bodies and this and that. That's not even out there to that standing, depending upon where your understanding is at. Zodiac comes from the word zygote. You have three stages of embryogenesis, which is gamete, zygote, embryo, and then the fetus. Then the infant, or the infinite, or the infinite, which is infinity. That's where the word infant comes from, or the word, where the word infant is tied into. It's tied into the word infinity. You see? This whole understanding is based on cosmic understanding, based on the occult sciences, which is nothing but the dark sciences, the hidden sciences, not the obvious and the thrown in your face sciences, the hidden sciences, the subtle ones, the subliminal ones. So there's no world to that degree of understanding. There's only a world, and you are the world 
whirling gamete, the whirling zygote, the whirling embryo, the whirling fetus. That is the only world in exists in existence. That's the only world that exists. That's the only world in existence. There was nothing out there at all. Until until you give it your attention. Because attention is life. Why do you think there's so many if in your orbit if there's many things saying in your face or constantly making its way to you to or just making itself out there for you to look at it to give it attention. If something is real, nothing has to fight for your attention. Nothing has to be a loud commercial or be a colorful commercial or colorful ads and a whole bunch of loud sounds and loud noises and loud voices and shapes and colors and blasting at you and your eye, your eyesight and your view just blasting coming at you. If it was truly life, Life does not need to validate itself. Life is. When something needs to validate itself, it means it has no life and it's seeking a life giver, which is you are the life giver. Nothing has life until you give it. You are the Lazarus, you give things life. And then you give it a chance to affect you as well, which keeps you stuck in this physical body, this carnal experience. So there's no world out there anywhere. If there's no such thing as space, time, and distance besides your own space of your own being, or outer space or time and distance, how can there be somewhere so far or people doing something or something happening over there, something happening over there. How can that even exist? Until, unless, unless, until you give it life, you give it attention. So we live in a world and this world is a swirl of atomic energy turning itself into a bio, uh, um, biological geometry of some sort, which becomes a human body. So this is the only world there is, just this, that's it. This is the only world. There's no world in existence. You are the world that whirls things into its orbit and its cipher. You whirl things by giving it attention. You bring it into your cipher. You cause worry onto your world. You bring stress into your world. You bring frustration into your world. You invite confusion and turmoil into your world. into your whirling intelligence. Nothing exists until you let it exist. Understand that nothing exists unless you let it exist. There's an old saying, I forgot the moment. Um, nothing is real, all is permitted. Nothing is real. Nothing is real here. All things are permitted, which means that you are the one that makes things real. You are the one that gives things permission to gain access into your world. Not your world, but your world. You are whirling it into your orbits. You are whirling it around your cipher. And everything that that illusion comes with, you inherit. 
So in other words, learn to mind your damn business. If it ain't calling you, don't call it. There's literally nothing going on here. There's no events, there's no news, there's no none of this. There's, there's nothing going on but you. Learn to zoom in. And at the same time you zoom in, zoom out from the outer distractions, interferences, and interruptions. But you got to think about it. If things are there loud and colorful and look at me, look at me, I'm here, look at how I'm dressed, look at how I'm living. Look at what I'm doing. Do what I'm doing. Stop what you're doing and do what I'm doing. Look like me. Look at me. Live like me. Don't live like that. Do this. Don't do that. Look over here. Look over here. Pay attention to me over here. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. You see this all day. From phones to computers to society, outside, the store, grocery store, supermarkets, laundromats. In the public, these things that are saying, look at me, look at me, look at me, is because it has no life of its own. It's seeking to suck off of your life. It needs your life to give it life. We are the life givers, literally, metaphorically, spiritually, biologically. We are the ones that give life. Don't you see that? You have to see that. You are here, right? You listen to this video. You are. It's because life was given so that you can be here. So now that you have a life. But what are you going to do with the life that was given to you? Are you going to keep giving life to other things that have nothing to do with you, that doesn't serve your purpose? It's not serving you. Why are you giving it life? Why are you warming up the bottle for it? Why are you... Nurturing it. Why are you caressing it? Why are you holding it? Why are you feeding it? When it's taking from you and keeping you starved. Starving your emotions. Leaving you depleted in feelings and thoughts. Cyclic nature. Keeping you a program. Maintaining your personality and your fraud identity. Or your fake identity. Because you never was a human body to begin with. And you're not now. You never will be. Nothing exists in your world until you look into its direction, until you acknowledge it, until you give it your attention. You can't complain about something and give it your attention at the same time. That doesn't make any sense at all. You can't clean a house and dirty it at the same time. That doesn't make any sense, any sense at all, any common sense whatsoever. We're giving things our precious attention for no damn reason. Unless you just live for gossip and drama and trauma and conflict and turmoil, then yes, so be it. And you shall find yourself in that realm because you chose to give it your attention. But it doesn't mean that it exists. Because in actuality, it really doesn't exist at all. But you give it an existence, you give it a life. So therefore, it begins, it becomes a succubus that begins to suck the life out of you. So we gotta recognize which ones, which lane of attention that we give our direction to, whether it's a sucking energy, or a giving energy, or just let you be kind of energy. So there's no world, there's just the world, or the swirl, like an atomic nucleus. To touch upon that, let me touch upon that real quick. Next doorway is, you are nothing but the atom. Why do you think 
the gamete, zygote, embryo, fetus, infant. Why do you think this thing is a swirling thing? It's, it's, a, it's a fetal position. This fetal position is a swirling position. It's a whirl. It's a swirl. As you see, the fist balls up because that's the tighter circle. The tighter circle comes out and spirals out. That's the whirl the, that you are in. That's the swirl. The swirl, the world that you are in. You are not in no place. Well, only within a space. That space is the present moment. That's it. Now, what does that swirl remind you of? Yes, it reminds you of the atom. You are nothing but the atom that behaves just like an atom. You mean? Well, right now, right now in this moment, wherever you're sitting or standing in this very moment, you have something in front of you, behind you, to the left of you, to the right of you, above you, and under you, that you use and or always keep close. Like, the orbiting of an actual atom that keeps itself orbited by electrons, protons, and neutrons, as well as molecules, compounds, compounds, mass, and gross matter. You are the atom that appeared in the Eve name hours. Adam and Eve, the phenomenon that appeared within the darkness. The atomic nucleus that went through stages of growth and development within the Eve name hours. What is in the Eve name hours? The moon. What happens during the moon cycle? The mother's body. The Adam and Eve. You are the Adam. Within his own ignorance. You are the answer in question of itself. So you are the Adam. This is why Four stages of development, gamete, zygote, embryo, fetus. This thing is in a swirling or a whirling. It's in a swirling and a whirling constantly. The position that it's in and the pose that it's in is in a swirling, whirling, and spiraling, just like an atom. So you are nothing but an atom. These electrons and protons and neutrons that this atom keeps around its orbit is all the crap that you keep around your orbit. You are pulling things into your orbit that don't serve you. That's not beneficial for you. You create your own world. You are the world that creates your own swirled. So there's no world, there's only a swirl. You exist within a swirl. You exist within a swirl. You exist within a swirl. Not a world. A swirl. The swirling is around your immediate body all the time. Whatever you swirl yourself with, it keeps you company. And it will eat off of you. It will drain you dry. If what you are bringing to your orbit and circling around your nucleus isn't conducive towards your well-being. Okay. So, and then you have, and you have electrons, protons, and neutrons, which are the immediate swirling of the atomic nucleus. And the outside, you have molecules, compounds, and gross matter, or mass and gross matter. This is the accumulation of a body. This is why you are not the body, because you create bodies around you. 
you create current events body, you create news body, you create politic body, you create music industry bodies, you create whatever bodies you want to create around your reality because you are the true world, you are the true world, and you are the true world rolling. You are the true swirling or the swirl that swirls whatever you want in your cipher. However you want to keep yourself company in this human experience, in this physical experience, that's your choice. That's your divine choice. All I'm saying is choose wisely. Okay, you can't <clears throat> just choose wisely. So what we call molecules, compounds, mass, and gross matter around the atomic nucleus of your swirl, of your world, these are literally all just the people, places, and things we keep most close to us and the people, places, and things we keep most distant from us or most distant from us. And everything we call the most closest and the most distant is nothing but us and things within our orbit that we ourselves create. That's it. Period. You see, to the brain, to people of the brain and people that are programmic minds or pro, or have that programmic mindset, what I'm saying right now, this may sound very, someone who's being very narrow-minded or being very self-centered, but it's not. It's actually just pure truth of what truth purely is. You have to get into you. Be interested by you. Be amazed by you. Be your own news. Be your own current events. See? Be your own favorite musician. Be your own favorite clothes designer. Be your own favorite actor, your own favorite actress. Whatever you want to be, be your own. Anchor yourself within your own existence, within your own experience. Anchor yourself. Get into yourself. Be engulfed within yourself. Swallow yourself within your own existence, within your own experience. The most attention that anything should be getting in this reality, in this paradigm, in this realm, from you, is you. You are the only thing that should be getting your own main, major, uh, majority of the attention. And when you are doing that, you are very self-engulfed. You are very into yourself. Like I said, these spiritual concepts have been uglified or been look ugly when they go into names like narrow-minded, self-centered, and conceited. That has nothing to do with anything. It's neither here nor there when it comes to this spiritual understanding. Yes, you can have egoistical uh, traits and behaviors and characteristics. Sure, absolutely. But that has nothing to do with that side of the fence. This is this side of the fence. You just become entombed. You just become enlightened. You just become aligned. And you see the foolery for what it truly is. That's pretty much what it is. And dealing with this whole swallowing aspect and swallowing yourself into yourself and just being fully engulfed in you and your you-ness and your now-ness and your I-ness. Let's go into this next doorway that touched upon what, I'm, what I just said. The next doorway is gods. Now we're talking about mythology. So this is for people who are into mythology and folklore and things of that nature. Gods that are world eaters. There are gods that were world eaters. This is mythology to get an understanding or a different twist in the concept of the world eating or those who ate worlds. Dealing with the understanding, the metaphysical understanding that I touched upon prior to. So the world eater, if you want to be uh, tie in to have a more clearer Symbological understanding is actually the gamete zygote 
embryo and fetus. You ate the world. That is God. That is the mythology. The mythology is the stages of development of the gamete, zygote, embryo, and fetus. Because these gods, they exist what in like zodiac signs and things of that nature right there. They correlate or they coincide with zodiacal intelligence. These different zoo types. Why do you think zygote is a part of one of the developments of you inside of reproducing or producing inside of your mother? Zygote is also uh, the zoo gate or the zoo types or the zoodicias, which is what you know as zodiac. Because you go through different animal reptilian stages as you're forming this is why you have certain gods who are also you know have animalistic traits or animalistic features because you went through every animal and reptile and amphibian while you all while you were going through the development stages within your mother gamete zygote embryo fetus before you became the infant the infinite one the one who represents the eternity and infinity of all things and from infant you become a baby which is baba and ba according to antiquitous language or ancestral language means the soul so baba or baby which is baba just means soul soul or the soul, which is solar, which has become solar, the solar solitarian. So rewinding it back to the gods and the point I was making. And when you think about mythology or gods in mythology, the gods that are the world eaters in mythology, mythology is nothing but mythology. That's why you have mythological, mathematical, myth, math. Mythology, mathology. It's the adding and subtracting, multiplying, dividing. Isn't that what you do with yourselves? Doesn't yourselves do that? Uh, I forgot what it's called. But the cells split and divide and they multiply. Uh, not osmosis. It's called something else. Uh, Goddamn. Anyway, it'll come. Mitosis. Seven. Mitosis. The stages of mitosis, which is cell division, cell multiplication, before you become a gamete, which is the first developing stage. So, mythology is mythology, or mythology is mythology. It's just math. The development of something, the multiplying of something, the abundance of something, the replicating of something. That is what you go through during your stages of development or the fertilization, things of that nature, or words of that nature, understandings of that nature where you are developing within the mother. And myth also means mother as well. So the math, you are the divine math within cosmic motherhood. You are the divine math within the cosmic motherhood. That is where you get mythology. Mythology derives from the ancient word mutu, which is ma, ta. Ta means land. Ma, of course, means the balance, the balancing of land. Okay, so I'm going to get too off grid at the moment. Gods that are world eaters in mythology that consumed the world, swallowed the world, and destroyed the world. These were gods known as Kronos, Zeus, Lemos, Shiva, etc., the swallowing, the consuming of the world, the swallowing of the world, the destroying of the world wasn't pertaining to an actual world itself. 
It was metaphysical and spiritual for destroying the idea of world. Think about what I just said. Remember, the word gods is synonymous with the word guides. That is what a god is. A god is synonymous or is another way of saying guide. So these gods are nothing but guides or guiding posts or things that guide you. An intelligence, a guiding intelligence. That is what a God is. It's an intelligence guiding the intelligence. That's what the word God is. Okay? So, these gods in mythology known as Kronos, is the god of time, Zeus, the most Shiva, etc., weren't pertaining to an actual world itself when they were consuming it, swallowing it, and destroying it. They were talking about consuming, swallowing, and destroying the idea, the idea, destroying the idea that a world itself exists somewhere out there. They were swallowing, destroying, and consuming that. They were killing the idea. Because when you kill the idea of a world out there, big, round, circular, all this nonsense, you destroy that idea, you zoom in on yourself. That is the immediate, automatic end result. When you zoom out, you also zoom in. You zoom out. Zoom in. That happens. That happens simultaneously. That is an axiomatic reaction. That is the yin to its yang, the yang to its yin. That is the in to its out, the out to its in. That's what happens. So it was metaphorical and spiritual for destroying the idea of world itself because no actual world as we know it and have been shown actually exists. And once you eliminate this concept, this idea of world that's out there and big and full of countries, land and water and oceans and seas and so on, once you eliminate this idea, you zoom in on the self and you begin to know thyself. When that happens, you begin to self-reflect. You begin to shed the layers. You begin to not look at what's going on in that person's life or that angle or that direction or that event or though or that news or that drama or that conflict or that trauma that's going on over there. You don't give a damn anymore. You don't care because you know that none of that exists. Something that doesn't have life looks for life to give it life. For instance, whether I make these videos or not, I exist. When I shut this video off, before I put this video on and after I shut it off, I still am. I'm not bombarding. Saying, hi, look at me, look at where I'm at, look what I'm wearing, look what I'm doing, look what I'm talking about. Da, 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 da. I still remain me, and the me still remains the I. Not coming at you with loud sounds and splashes and bright colors and vivid images, I'm just being purely me. If you are drawn to this, that is something outside of your reason and logical mind something spiritual. It is a heart guidance. It is of heart guidance. 
something that can't fully understand, understand you and seeks you to understand it. Most importantly, understanding it, to experience it. It's the same, in the same way how I came into the knowledge of self and how I came into the gnosis. So I can only give it how I live it. See? It can only be given according to the way that I'm living. <clears throat> so getting back, Kronos, one of the gods, one of the guides. Let's keep it on one of the gods. The Kronos, the father of time, swallows up. This is according to mythology. Kronos, which is the father of time, swallows up Demeter, which is the goddess of space and area. So time swallows up space and area. When you look at mythology, you're looking, you should be searching and seeking or looking to interpret principle, not personal drama that happens between one God and another God, one goddess and another goddess, or one God and goddess, one goddess and another God. You're not seeking the drama, you're not seeking the, the personal reasons or why they did it. You are looking for principle to interpret the message, most important. That's what someone that has a mind does, someone that has common sense does that naturally. Kronos, the father of time, swallows up Demeter, the goddess of space and area. What does this mean? Also, too, the word Demeter is also the word diameter or diameter. And diameter is connected to the word perimeter. So basically, what is that saying? That's saying that you, the intelligence of here and now completely destroys the illusion of then and there. Kronos, the father of time, the god of time, destroys Demeter, the goddess of space and area, you can say. You break it down, what she's about in principle, space and area. It's by no coincidence, accidental mistake that the goddess Demeter, named Demeter, sounds just like the word diameter, and diameter being related to the word perimeter. So basically, you destroy things that are so called at a diameter away from you or is a perimeter. You kill the perimeter of things, which once again, you kill the world. You destroy the idea of something out there, far, magnanimous, huge, humongous, and you kill the perimeter, you kill the diameter, you see? And you become Kronos, the father of time, which is basically the time body because your spirit, your soul is a timeless nature, but this timeless nature is encapsulated within a time vehicle. You become the father of time, the god of time, the chronos. And even chronos is even attached to the word chromosome, which is in your blood. See, so these gods are nothing but biological, anatomical, metaphysical, spiritual, energetical forces and principles of existence within you. just to make an example of certain things, okay? The next line in doorway is, something that isn't a world needs the attention of a real world to make itself be perceived and believed as a world. But in reality, can't be and never will be a world. There is no such thing as a world. This is the point of redirecting your attention out there in your newspapers and magazines and laptop outer algorithms and phone 
news and updates and events on people, places, and things that you never been, never has met, never have met, may never will be, and has absolutely nothing to do with you. And to bring redirected attention back upon self and keep it on self. I'm creating a society of minds. This is a society of minds. This is not really a channel or a show. This is a society of minds. And me having the responsibility of certain minds that are watching me, listening to me, a part of this, I have a responsibility to uphold as a divine being. And when you have power and access into your mind and the capabilities of it, it's very wise to tread throughout it uh, consciously with full awareness because you actually create things, not around me, because that can't be, only around you. Because you are the whirling intelligence. You are whirling. You are constantly whirling a world around you. There is no world out there. Something that isn't a world, quote unquote, needs the attention of a real world or whirling to make itself be perceived and believed as a world when in reality can't be and never will be. Basically, any agenda out there that uh, they would have to make you create a world reality for them. That's why any agenda may have to try and cover all levels of a reality to make you create a dimension for them within the space of your perception. Meaning that whatever we've been taught and trained as kids that there's a sky, there's a there's a universe, there's a sky, there's a land, and there's water. Something that has an agenda, that may have an agenda out there, that's trying to make you validate, confirm, and give a body, and give a world, or a whirling, or a world to their false existence. They would need to give you a top and a bottom to cover the top and cover the bottom and everything in between. So basically to make their self seem real. So they'll have to put something in the cosmos to make it seem like, well, there's astrological activity, there's alien activity out there. So now they're covering the top of your, of your attention, of your existence. Now they have to cover the sky. Underneath the universe is the sky. Right, according to how they how we've been taught. Now there has to be something in the sky going on. So called poisons, chemtrails, aliens, etc. And now they have to say there's something even on the earth and on the land, because now they cover the universal part of you, the top part of you, they're covering the sky part of you. Now they have to cover the land part of you. Or well, there's something going on the earth and land. And you get current events and news of aliens and inner earth beings and all this other nonsense, celebrity drama, gossip, mischief, to keep you covered on land. Now, the only thing they have to do is cover your bottom, the bottom part of you, which is the land, ocean, lakes, and seas. So they have to say something is happening deep in the water, which they call new water creatures, mysteries in the abyss, you know, stuff, crap that's in the water, supply, etc. When you believe these things are happening, you have covered four layers of your reality, which means that you have just gave them a body. You just gave them a world to exist within. And that world that they exist within is only glued to you. That's it. It doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect anybody else. Because I don't believe in the damn thing. It's nothing to believe in. And I'm very wise about what I give my attention to. I can hear things. 
fun hearing things. There's a difference between hearing and listening. It's like there's a difference between looking and seeing. I can see something and I can hear it. But if I decide to look at something, I'm giving attention. If I decide to listen to something, I'm giving attention. Therefore, I make it a part of my orbit. Now it's a part of my world and I give it a world in return to cipher me, to orbit me, to drive me crazy, to suck from me, to deplete me, to eat off of me. If it's of no benefit, if it doesn't serve me. So this is what I'm saying. This is why anything of any agenda has to cover these four levels, the universe, the sky, the land, and the water. The universe, the sky, the land, and the water. Once this agenda has your attention towards their agenda of the universe, something going on the universe, something going on the sky, something going on the land, something going on the water, you have just given them permission to access your private orbit. And by you giving them permission, it's just as well, it's just as the same thing as you giving them life. So you have just gave something life to something which wasn't a life to begin with. It's like I tell you, something is constantly bombarding your eyes and your ears and your attention, saying, look at me, look at me, look what's going on now, look what happened. Oh my God, how did that happen? How did this happen? Look what she's doing, look what he's doing, but that's... What's going on over there? What's going on over here? They did that for real? Oh, I can't believe that. Died? Who lived? Who was born? Who left? Who did this? Who did that? If something is constantly in your face saying, look at me, 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 look at me that means it's not real. A flower doesn't have to say, look at me, look at me, look at me. A bird doesn't have to say, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Deers, bears, nature doesn't have to say, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, because it just is, it's life. It is life, therefore it doesn't need to bombard you with its own lively existence. Something that's not real has to constantly bombard you because it needs a realness to validate its false existence. So there's no world out there. There's no people, there's no events, there's no politics, none of, this, none of this music, acting, none of this stuff is going on. There's nothing going on but you. There's nothing going on but you. There is nothing outside of you. Nothing outside of you. Nothing. Literally. Um, so that's why you know I showed you pictures of certain things to understand that there's nothing going on. So before the, em the embryo or the gamete, zygote, embryo, fetus, and infant, this is the zygote reference right there. That's the zygote, it's the cell or mitosis. If you want. This is the world. This is the worldly. This is the worldly. There's nothing else going on. Understand? This is the true world. The true world is just you. You are the true world. You're into news and current events and all this other nothing that's going on. Nowhere. There's nothing that's going on. There's nothing going on. There's no news. Matter of fact, the world news, I don't know if you know. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. The world news is uh, basically just in their initials, their letter initials. There's no NEWS. There's N, then E, then W, then S. 
which means north, east, west, south. That's what news is. News just means north, east, west, south, which is the cross. Right? That's the cross. The cross is also known as the Christ. Right? This is the cross as well. See, you are the Christ. You are the cross. You are the news. The baby crossing his arms. This is the cross. This is the Christ. This is the N E W S, the news. You are the news. There is no news. There's just nows. So don't look at the news. Look at the nows. Look at what's now. The only thing that's now is you. Also, another way to look at the word news, N-E-W-S, north, east, west, and south. That's what people do when they do the cross. Oh, yeah. That's north, east, west, south. The news. So you're just doing the compass. And compass is related to the word compassion. To have compassion for your own ignorance. To withdraw from all the illusion and get back to the main central point of reality, which is you. The main nucleus of reality, which is you. And when we look at the word news, once again, north, east, west, and south. What do you think happens when you are inside of the mother. You are turning north, east, west, and south inside of her, going through the gametes, zygote, embryo, infant, baby process. This is the news. This is the news right here. This is the north, east, west, and south. You are the world. You are the only news in existence. You are the only nows. Forget the news. Get into the nows. If you think something is out there that's circular and round, big, or just circular and round, put this in your mind. This is the world. This is the world that you are in. The world that you are in is in yourself. This is the world. That's it. That's the only world that you are in. The only world that I am in. The only world that anybody is in. Think there's zodiac signs out there somewhere? Oh, this is the zodiac sign. All around you. These are the zodiac signs. You're going through the different zoo types. The different animals, different reptilians, the different amphibians. It's all inside of you. It's nothing outside of you. It's all internal. It's all innate. It's all insidious. This is why I deal with the occult, because the occult is the occultism, which means nothing but that which is dark, which is hidden from you, which is sub, which is subtle and subliminal from your view, from your view, from your your knowledge. It's into the knowing. You have to get into the knowing. So we've confirmed that you are the true world. You are the true world. Remember the world. That saying, the world is in your hands. What do you think they mean by that? When the world is in your hands. Just means you. Are in your own hands. And you fell from the heavens. You descended from the heavens. This is a falling from the heavens. You fell. From the heavens. The umbilical cord. The umbilical. Is also where the word biblical. Is derived from. So biblical just means umbilical. 
so I'm giving you different concepts, different ways, different tools of mind, mind navigation to understand things at a more deeper level of understanding. To get yourself out of something out there and to get in here. You are the world eater. You eat the world. You eat the idea of a world somewhere. Because there's nowhere that this thing is somewhere to be. You are the only thing in existence. You and only you. Now looking at the world, just to make it more clearer for you, some more points to play with. We have words like city, town, state. Remember, these are words, these are key words that make you believe that there is a world or a state somewhere or countries and continents. And we just broke down the word country, which just means a body of land. This human body is a body of land. This body goes back inside the land when you leave this damn body. So this body of land is the land body. This is a country. Okay. Now let's look at the words, three words, city, town, and state. The word city is the word site. So true it is. The word city is the word site. The word C I T Y is actually the word C Y T E. Now, what is C Y T E? What is site? Site is the word cell. Once again, bringing what we think is a city somewhere, or cities and towns, or cities somewhere else. City just means sight, and sight just means cell, and cell is inside of the body. The word city is the word sight, C-Y-T-E, and the word sight is the word cell. As a matter of fact, why do you think you go sight seeing in a city? I'm going to let you ponder on that one for a minute. Why does someone go sightseeing inside of a city? If you have common sense, this would be very clear to you. And you won't have to bust your brain too much because it's very simple to understand. These channels, these videos are actually basically symposiums. Very simple. The word city also means, is also the word in city, meaning that which is insidious, inside, internal, innate. So there's nothing out there, there's everything in here. Now the word town. The word town is the word twin or twine, which means central, or center. So the word city means site, which means cell. The word town is synonymous with the word twin or twine, which means that which is centralized or center. Now the word state, because we're looking at three words, city, town, and state. City and town we cover, let's cover state. The word state is connected to the word stut which means support. The word state also means mind, like state of mind, which means that which is happening and that which is present. So now, if we look at a collection of all three words, city, town, and state, making it internal, making it immediate, making it now here in the moment, if you put these words together, it means Cellular centered intelligence. This is what the words city, town, and state mean. City, 
town, and state. If you put these three metaphysical definitions, dictionary definitions, and metaphysical interpretations all together, it means a cellular centered intelligence. I'm telling you, there's absolutely nothing outside of the human body or the human organism. There's nothing and nothing in existence outside of the human orbit. You are literally the brain traveling through its own mind. Okay. The next line in doorway is, if I ask you right now, I'll say, what are you? Say, well, are you alive or are you dead? You say, I'm alive. Okay. But alive is actually two words. Those two words are A and live. A, live. So you are A, live, not alive. There's no such thing as alive. You are A, live. But a live what? In other words and understandings, you are the only thing live in existence. So you are you are the only thing existing within existence itself. Whatever you choose to acknowledge and give life to and invite is on you. Because you are the life giver. You are the only thing that is live that can make anything else live. You are the only thing that makes other things live. This is why it becomes in your moment, it becomes present. Because you are giving liveness to it. You are making a live, you are making it a certain kind of livelihood. You are keeping things live. Because you are a live thing. Or a live phenomena. The next doorway is to give attention to something is to create a dimension for something. It's the science of dot line geometry. The science of dot line and geometry creates a dimension to that which you give attention to. Dot is the pupil. Line is the looking at something. Geometry is the space between the pupil and the location that the pupil was looking at. But this is dot line geometry. This is when you give attention to something, you are doing dot line and geometrical science. The dot being the black dot, which is the pupil of the eye. The line being what I'm giving attention to. And the space in between is the geometry that I'm creating for myself that I, I begin to bring around my whirling. I begin to swirl around my world. And it becomes my orbited world. And I speak it into existence. And I keep it in existence. The word, the word world is also the word word. If you take the letter L out of the word world, you have the word word. So you speak things into existence. Your word keeps a world around you. This is how you create your world, so-called, quote-unquote, by your word. Going back, dot line and geometry creates, this is what creates the dimension of what you give attention to. That in itself creates time, a walk to and a walk through. As I walk to it, I walk through. When I give it attention, I have just created space, time, and distance. And it gives me a distance to walk to it. At the same time I'm walking to what I'm giving attention to, I'm walking through it. I'm giving it a body. I'm giving it a life. I'm giving it a liveliness. I'm agreeing. I'm believing. I'm giving it permission, I'm giving it access. 
to enter into and to cross over into my reality, to make it a reality for me. But all along, it was nothing but an illusion that was seeking my attention to give it life. I break this down in class as well. This gets a lot, like I said, everything I touch upon gets a lot, a lot deep. Trust me. Um, you are the life that gives life to all potential. You validate and give things livelihood. You are the immediate, you are the immediate that gives birth to distance. Soon as your eye pierces through a perceived space of existence to acknowledge something on the other end of that space continuum. I know it may sound like a lot of wordplay at the moment. I understand. If you want this simplified in ABC 123 baby food, you will join the courses and the classes. There are seats already getting filled up for next solar cycle, which is what you call a year. So next year, uh, these classes are going to be extremely powerful. Videos, photos, so many points of reference, historical points of reference, ancestral points of reference. I'm an artist as well, so I'm drawing my homework up as well. Um, this is a very unique, very rare class uh, that's going to be created in this existence. Because I'm keeping everything on the main program. Attention. Not saying that other things are well. I'll get deeper into it. Okay, I'll get a lot deeper into it. Last line of doorway is what you call environments, places, distance, atmospheres, space, and travels are nothing but agreements and contracts. They're nothing but agreements and contracts. Things that we've agreed. That is that far, or is that long away, or that how far that is? These are just agreements that we made in contracts that we made with reality itself. I'm saying, okay, I agree that that's a plane right away. I agree that that's 80 miles away, and I've made a contract with that agreement. You are a god when you uh, you are a guiding post, and you have sub guiding posts to keep you on this guiding mission in this reality. Okay, so these are just agreements and contracts that we've made and or created to give our reality an ambiance, to give our reality a depth, our experience, a perimeter, to place ourselves in a specific dimension of existence, to have a dimensional experience. So we are here for this. We are here to create things of a dimension or depth of length, height, width, but all I'm saying is choose wisely to that which is beneficial for you and that which serves you. Not to that which may drive you insane or keep you frustrated or keep you pissed off or keep you emotional, or keep you worried, or keep you stressed and so on and so forth. Because that just is just a whole bunch of body play. That creates a whole bunch of chemicals in the body. Toxicity. It keeps you anchored within the illusional vessel that in the carnal nature, which is the human body. And it keeps you anchored here, making it challenging for you to transcend beyond this reality when it's time to transcend. This is what you call death. Um, so we're here to have a dimensional experience. To keep ourselves as the atom or atomic nucleus within a concurrence of random happenings, meaning to give our existence an experience, to give our moment a time environment, to give our being something to do and somewhere to go, to invite a certain something into our nothing, to have that specific something keep our nothing company. This is what we came here to do. In other words, it is the atomic experience, the atomic reality 
Everything here in this specific reality is based solely and primarily on mind and atomic nucleus. Like I said, I know what's the word for. Rewind it if you have to go back because this is about taking notes. This is not some video, some channel, some show. This is class, free class, free notes to take into or to take down. Write these things down. Look back at it tomorrow, the next day, the next hour, the next few minutes from now. Let these lines that I say, certain things that I say, be things that you go back and look back upon to open up all the doorways in your mind, to gain access into it, to be, to find where your common sense resides and connect the common thread to be the common Godhead in this reality that you came here to be. So once again, I ask you, are we really in a world or not? Am I as, as I am, as you are? I'll see you guys in class. Until then. Do your research. One, zero.